Hi, Julie Powell here. Today I'm going to take you for a little look inside the brand new DxO Photolab 3. Um, they claim it's the most advanced editing photo editing software. Um, and I've only been playing with it for a couple of days and I've got to admit I'm pretty damn impressed. Um, the color wheel is amazing. The repair tool is really cool. Um, and the local adjustment manager is fabulous. So let's have a little look. So when I first opened it, I thought, hmm, okay, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Um, but that's okay. Uh, these things that all have their own little individual different ways of setting up. So um, it has your photo library listed here where you can search through whatever um, folders and bits and pieces that you want. Um, and you also have the custom tab, which is where we're going to spend most of our time. So inside the customize panel, which is similar to the develop module in Lightroom or um, Luminar 4, etc. Um, you have a film strip down the bottom, so you can select your images, you can rate them. There is also, um, if you hold your mouse over it, it also brings up the XF um, information um, and various other um, bits and pieces, flash it and fire and all sorts of things like that. You've also got your metadata over here. So that lists the camera that I was using and the lens I was using as well as your ISO, f-stop and various other bits and pieces. You can also add in your keywords. Um, there is a preset editor but I will get back into that later. Um, this is obviously what you are working on um, and then we have your what you would expect to be normal bits and pieces. So you've got your histogram which is not editable um, which is a bit of a, a pain but that's okay. You've got um, your white balance picker, exposure compensation, um, so you can go through and you can change various bits and pieces in there. Um, the DxO Smart Lighting, now I will come back to that a little bit later. Um, this is all in the Essentials um, panel. So there's some things in here which are pretty cool. Um, like the Clearview Plus, which is not, it's a bit like Dehaze. Um, it's not only great for landscapes, but for other things as well. So you can toggle these on and off. So that's with the Clearview off. And that's with the Clearview back on. So there's a lot more clarity in there. You can also um, adjust the contrast, but you can adjust the micro contrast as well, which is brilliant for bringing out um, contrast in some of the smaller areas. I found it fabulous. Um, there's also noise reduction, your horizon tool, your crop tool, etc., etc. Then that's all sort of fairly standard. Now, once we get we can collapse that. Now you can float these around, you can move them up, move them down. Then you've got light, colour and details. Now some of these um, appear in various different places. So for instance, Clearview Plus con and Contrast um, and Exposure Compensation, Smart Metering, um, Smart Lighting, they're in Essential Tools and Lighting. Um, your your colour balance is there as well. Um, noise reduction, um, lens sharpness, chromatic aberration, um, that gets rid of that, you know, the purple highlights and things like that. Um, then you've got um, distortion. And so most of those, are, if you've used Luminar or if you've used Lightroom, um, these look like a lot, but if you just work through sort of from top to bottom and work your way through, they're pretty much um, standard type of thing. Where it really comes into 
its own is what's new now I haven't used any of the other photo lab products um, although I have used Nick effects but I'll get into that later um, there's some really cool features that have been put in PL3 which weren't in the other ones now one is this HSL panel which is awesome um, I will probably have to do an entire new video on that but if you go to um, the DxO page and go to their tutorial section there is some fabulous webinars this one here is just using the HSL slider um, this one is on creating portraits so there's some fabulous stuff there if you want to go learn some more on that um, and it's really really good if you wanted to let me just see if I can pick something else for instance here I was playing with this and we were changing the color of the coke can um, there's a lot more to it than that um, but it is very very cool so jump back into here um, the other thing which is really great is the repair tool now you can um, click it from here or you can go up to here and get the repair tool now up here you've also got the crop um, your white balance picker red eye reduction and your local adjustments which we'll get into shortly so the repair tool is like a clone tool um, but it's actually got some AI in it and it's very very cool so you can um, either repair or you can clone you can change the size you can have feathering so you can have it quite soft and you can have it a quite opaque or not so if you wanted to for instance if you wanted to clone out wrinkles but you don't want them to be disappeared completely you just want them to be um, slightly softened then using the repair at um, an opacity level of maybe 10 or 20 is a great thing you can turn the masks on and off um, these are masks that I had before and you can see where I've picked it there and it automatically decides what it wants to fix so if I come in here for instance and I want to pick that bit there it picks an area through there so I can turn oops I can turn my mask on and off and decide that yep that actually did a really good pick so it's quick and easy and it is simple to use it's also really good I'm just gonna zoom out a bit um, for fixing things in the background um, this program does apparently have a fair bit of artificial intelligence in it and it is pretty clever um, so the next thing is local adjustments now this tool is um, also pretty fantastic now you can go in with the brush tool um, and it actually comes up here with um, what button so if you use control and scroll you um, make your brush bigger or smaller if you use shift and scroll you can change your feathering from hard to soft and if you use alt and click that's actually an eraser you can select mask unmask hide mask all the rest of it so clicking on that shows you a what mask I currently had on the image and it will bring up the um, controls on your screen so you don't have to go back over here and figure out what you're doing they're right there where you're working so you've got your exposure your contrast um, micro contrast clear view that you can use um, highlights midtones shadows and your blacks so that's all there then you've got your color so you can change your vibrancy your saturation your temperature your tint and your hue 
and this is then your sharpness and your blur so if you wanted to you could very easily paint in if you had something and blur the foreground or the background now if you right click on your screen you then bring up this little wheel um, auto mask erase new mask so you can have multiple masks on the one reset or that resets the whole thing um, control Z will undo um, you've got brush and then you've got gradient filter so if you wanted to have a gradient filter you just click on that you can decide which of these whether it's the light color or detail option that you want to go for um, and just click and bring it up now of course you can rotate it here there everywhere do whatever you want to do it brings it up you could drop your exposure right down or you could go in and drop your blacks further um, you could do whatever you want it's probably more in line with a landscape than with still life like I'm doing here um, and then you just right click back into here and go into here now auto mask is I'm still trying to wrap my head around this one too this is pretty cool so if I say for instance I want to pick the yellow and then I pick all the rest of that I can then come into here And I'm pulling down just the vibrancy or pulling up just the vibrancy on the yellow that it detected in that area because I clicked on it um, if you wanted to um, reverse that you could come over to here and you can invert that so that everything else is selected other than what you picked so it's kind of a bit like using a layer mask in Photoshop but it when you click on an area it picks everything else it's fairly similar it's a little bit confusing um, but if you again go back into here um, it's covered off a little bit in some of these um, webinars that DxO have so um, it's yeah pretty cool um, other local adjustments of course you've got your eraser so you can remove things um, okay so you have also got um, the preset editor now it does come with um, different presets so there's portrait landscape black and white atmosphere high dynamic range smartphones neutral colors etc 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 and they are I believe just a matter of just clicking on one and that will apply it to the image so if we just try another image and we'll try HDR okay so if you want to compare um, images side by side you can do that so that's the original one straight out of the camera and this is the one that I did with all the adjustments so you can see that I've cleaned up a little bit of the image I've saturated the yellow um, and I have deepened the blacks and I have added some clarity into it um, so that is that image there so um, that's just a first little look around um, DxO Photo Lab 3 I um, hope you found that informative I will come back and do some other videos on various bits and pieces um, so thanks for watching bye for now